the second part of this lecture, we're actually going to make the slideshow work and change between the images, the titles, and the captions. To make sure that the slideshow will run smoothly, we're going to preload our images so that there's no delay when the slideshow is running. You do need to be aware, however, that by preloading your images, it may make your page load a little smaller. It's really important to properly edit and optimize your pictures to the right size with a relatively low um, DPI or PPI of 100 or so for your resolution so that they're not taking up too much space or too much bandwidth. We're going to create an image array and this has the path to each of the images that we're using. You'll notice I'm not using meaningful names here. The reason that I did this is because if I were to give this to a client or to somebody else who wanted to keep maintaining the site if they were using the same number of images, they could just r rename their images, save them into the same folder as image 1, image 2, image 3, etc., and they wouldn't have to recode anything for it to work. So there's some trade-offs there versus meaningful names and simple names in a pattern that you can replicate. And then I have count, which is a variable I'm going to use for the length of my image array. I'm going to use my preload function to preload the images for the slideshow. I'm using a for loop stepping through every image that I have in my array. You need to get the count up here, not inside the function, because if you try to do this and get the images.length inside the function, it doesn't stop with the number of images in the array. It just keeps going with no end and it becomes an infinite loop. So I've got my count which lets me step through and for each image.source I make it equal to images.i that is an index from this array right here and then I use images.push which will load the image this is called this is my preload function and it's called during my onload function I have a couple other variables I need to set I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to set the current slide. Notice we start on zero because the first index of an array is always zero. So we have indexes zero through four because we have five objects in this image array. We have parallel arrays for titles and captions so that all of the same index number, zero, it refers to image one, which is Barney, Bar Blarney Castle, which matches the description of Seamus is hanging out next to Blarney Cla Castle trying to decide if he wants to kiss the Blarney Stone or go to the pub. So they're all related in a parallel array. And we already declared count equals the images dot length. I don't need to count the other arrays because if I programmed it properly they all have the same length. Next I have to call the slideshow. So we've got a slide control function and we're already testing. You saw this in the previous one where we were setting up our display so that we're going to change the image between pause and play. When we pause it, we do a clear timeout, which stops our timer, which is calling our function. Otherwise, we're calling the display image function if we hit play. While play is going, we're in the display image function. And we're going to check to see if the current slide is less, I'm sorry, is greater than four. If it is greater than four, then we reset it to zero so it loops back to the first one so you don't run out of images. So it'll just form a continuous loop this way. And then I have my main image source. I'm setting images, current slide, which is our slide counter, titles, current slide, captions, current slide. So the index is identical because we're working with these three arrays, which are parallel. So all of the Images, titles, and captions will be related to each other. Then I increment current slide so it'll move to the next one, and I use a timer, set timeout. You have to use a set timeout. You don't want to use a set interval. If you use set interval, it will keep increasing the speeds and do all sorts of screwy things. You want to call it once and stop, call it once and stop. So we're going to call display image, and that's a recursive function call because it calls itself and 5,000 milliseconds is 5 seconds. That may seem like a long time, but you'll notice when I test it, it should give you time to read all of the captions, which is why it's set to that level. So this is the slideshow with the timer, and I've already tested it, so I'm not on slide number one. When I hit play, it changes to pause, which would allow me to hit pause after this. And you'll notice it's a fairly long delay. That should allow you enough time to actually read the entire caption. And so each delay will last for five seconds. 
it will loop through and I will wait through because there's only five images. So we'll go back through until we get to the beginning slide and you'll see that it's going to loop continuously through those five slides until I hit the pause button again. So I'm back at the beginning. I change it there and it will do nothing. I can sit here and wait. Anytime I want to restart it, I can hit pause and it will start. I can hit play and it will start playing the slideshow again. So the user has control on if the slideshow is playing or not. If you go to maryhelp.net, there's a link to the actual web page and the JavaScript for this program so that you can take a look at the program in its entirety. Thank <laughs> you.